Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to do a quick video, actually I don't know how quick it's going to be, about uh, some of the tools that we use to shape necks and um, who knows, we might even call this video you're doing it wrong or something like that. I don't know what we're going to call it. Um, Chris is, is over there and he's, he's trying to get me to, to crack up. So um, let's start with what the necks look like before we start shaping them and why they look like they do. Over the years, we've developed quite a few techniques that we have decided work really, really well for us. And um, when we get the necks looking like this, the fretboards have already been radiused and the inlay is all done um, and the back is still flat. Notice everything, we try to keep everything as flat as we can for as long as we can because it just makes life easier. So after we get them to look like this, then they go over to uh, to get frets. And um, I like to press frets in when the backs of the necks are nice and flat because uh, I use an arbor press to press them in and everything's flat. I don't have to have like a little, you know, cradle for the neck to go in or extra little bits to keep the neck from doing this number. I want everything to be flat and then the frets get pressed in, they get glued in and um, uh, that is the hot ticket. Then they go over to the router table and the neck, oh, by the way, this is the neck that we're doing for uh, my friend Drittle, and um, this is the neck for Greg. Um, I'm doing as many necks as I can simultaneously because as I get tools set up, if I just keep doing a bunch of stuff, then I only have to set the tools up one time. Hope that makes sense to you guys. More of those techniques that we've come up with, um, we're not that smart that we came up with them, but we've followed the Henry Ford principle of making stuff easy to do. So after we get everything fretted, we take them over to the router table and we put a, um, well, we put a little round over on them because the router table makes short work of that. All right, a couple things. See all these burn marks here? The reason that that happens could be because the bit is dull or it could be that you're going too slow when you're using your router table. Um, but that's kind of a big cut for, um, you know, a regular uh, router in a router table. So I went ahead and went slow. Don't worry, all of that stuff is gonna get shaved off in the next step. So, this guy is ready for round over. Let's go ahead and round it over. Oh wait, before we do, on this guy I put, because see how the router actually works, the center of the router is right about here but it keeps cutting. So what you wanna do is you wanna figure out where you definitely want to stop and make a mark on the side of the neck so that you don't go further than that. And remember, the center of the router bit is not the end of the cut. All right, so as Velva Jones says, it's as simple as that. Um, as you can see, I went a little bit quicker and I didn't get as many burn marks on this neck. Again, it's not gonna matter because the next step is gonna remove all the burn marks anyway. But you know, when you start taking a bunch of meat off like that, this starts to feel like a guitar neck. You could almost put it on and play it as is. Um, but I wanna show you guys one really neat tool that um, Chris and I actually, um, we, well, we, we fabricated part of it, and it is our deadhead sander. We've had a bunch of questions about the deadhead sander lately, so I thought I would give you guys a deep dive into what exactly the deadhead sander does, is, where we got the idea, shit like that. So let's go check it out. All right, so this is our deadhead sander, or our version of a deadhead sander. Now, it's not a true deadhead, and I'm going to explain that here in a second, but um, uh, this actually was just something that we were able to retrofit onto an existing sander uh, after it occurred to us that back in the day there had to have been a machine that um, the guys at the factories used to shape necks quickly and um, one, of the, one of the places that you can see a picture of the deadhead sander in action is in the Fender Custom Shop Design Guide manuals. So on page, whatever it is, uh, 35 of this one, there's a guy using a deadhead sander. Um, this one might not be a true deadhead either, 
Uh, again, we're going to get to that. And he's shaping a neck with it. And as you can see, what happens is it's a sander with a platen long enough to uh, grind an entire neck all at once. And that is almost exactly what ours is, only it's a little bigger. So ours started life as a um, uh, an Acme. I don't know where the, even the... Uh, Let's see, we got it at this place here, RC Parish & Co, Boulder, Colorado. Notice that they've had that sticker for so long it doesn't have their website on it. Um, and this is an Acme blah, blah, blah uh, edge sander. And these were available in the 50s and 60s. I think they were used at schools and prisons. I don't know where they were using. But um, they don't make this anymore. I think Acme is long since left the edge sander manufacturing uh, and they are concentrating primarily on dynamite and anvils now. Anyway, so what we did was we added this piece here, which is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a bunch of layers of plywood all glued together and all bolted together. It's really, really stable and it's really sturdy. Um, and uh, the nice thing about the Acme sander is it's got this kind of um, adjustment for the opposite end of the, the regular platen. So if you don't have one of these, you'll have to figure out some way to make one yourself. Um, the trickiest part was finding where we could have custom made belts um, that weren't ridiculously expensive made. And we get these belts from A&H Abrasives. They are... 4 inch by 92 and a half, and they are 50 grit belts. They work great. So, um, you know what though? Enough of the bullshit talk. Let's start to shape a neck with one of these things. So guys, I know I speed up and uh, do stuff at like fast motion, but I assure you all that was done in just a few minutes um, without speeding up the, uh, the belt. Of course, there's a lot more fine tuning that goes into it, but as you can see, we go from something like this to something like this very, very quickly um, with our deadhead sander. Let's do some more. So there you go guys. Chris, would you call this the Deadhead Sander the greatest tool in the world for shaping guitar necks? Yes. Yeah, I would too. So uh, here you go. This, um, this neck is almost done. Just a little tiny bit of hand sanding to go. And uh, that will be that. Um, there is a couple places where on our unit you can't get, we'll, we'll grind that in with a rasp. Um, and then hand sanding and all done. So our deadhead sander is a very aggressive wood removal system, but it's also a really accurate tool as well. Um, you can do C and D necks, you can do V necks, you can do asymmetrical necks, uh, you can do combinations. Uh, it takes a little while to get used to how it works, and um, I assure you, Chris and I both have ruined necks on this tool. 
Um, but after a while, it kind of becomes, you just get to know where you are in relation to the, um, the grinding surface, if you will. Okay, guys, so that should just about wrap it up. Um, if you have any questions about the deadhead sander, please leave them in the comment section below. If you really want to deep dive with me, um, you can send me an email through the website, and that's texastoastguitars.com. I do not have plans for the deadhead sander, so if you're going to ask me if I have plans, no, I don't. You're just going to have to kind of wing it like we did. Um, uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Only a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, we totally understand. Just share the video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.